right guys, Pastor Mark here. I hope you're well on this beautiful Monday night as we get to another week of the study of Ephesians. Thank you for all who joined us yesterday at our Sunday service. Hope you found it helpful, especially when I spoke about context and how important context was. Many other things, but it's so important that we understand context. And we've done the same in the study of Ephesians, that context is everything. It's absolutely everything else. This is just... The, we, we never really get to the depth of who God is, who we are in Christ, and then how we're in turn with to live because of that. Uh, just as uh, a shallow diagnosis uh, equals a shallow recovery and a shallow life, and we have to understand and go to depth in this, and this is why we have to expound God's word. Hence why we're in this for four weeks, and we're only at chapter three, but we should be if we were doing an in-depth study in this on a Sunday, we would be nowhere near chapter uh, chapter 3 by this point, but we only have these 10-minute videos. So if you are joining us for the first time, please, uh, uh, you're welcome, firstly. And you can catch up all our past ones, these 10-minute short videos going through the whole book and the whole study and the letter to the church in Ephesus, Paul, one of Paul's prison epistles, writing from a prison in Rome. And you can get... Uh, you can get to catch up more all these and walk your way through that. Anyway, as we now conclude in chapter 3, before we get into this, this found in 40, uh, 46, uh, halfway through, the first three chapters being really about the doctrine uh, and the doctrine of election and that we are saved uh, while we were dead in, in our sins and trespasses that God brought us alive and in him and then gave us a new inheritance and here Paul is concluding here he's almost bookending the first three parts uh, the first three chapters the first part half of his letter and he's, he's kind of bookending it here and he's doing it in a prayer and it's an absolutely astounding astounding prayer uh, which has got such depth you can spend weeks alone just going through this line upon line the this actual prayer but we don't have the time to do that so paul as i say concludes this letter and he's bookending it and and the prayer is to all the church that and the congregation of the church in ephesus which was mostly made up of gentiles although they were jews as well and the whole area of ephesus was was an area in asia minor which what they had idol worship and all sorts of stuff going on it was uh, a big marketplace and uh, almost like a modern day sodom and gomorrah and there were much temptation and many false gods and lots of temptations all around them and paul is through repetition as we know being hammering home to the church in ephesus who they are, keeping the foundation in Christ, knowing that they would continually walk in that knowledge of who they are, that they are God's chosen family, they are they have been granted this gift of salvation and given all things in Christ. They've been given a an inter we've been given a eternal inheritance, Paul saying them in turn us as well. Uh, and also that not none would be plucked from God's hand. So you no know, you can't be saved and then unsaved. You can't lose your salvation. If you've ever been taught that, it's not the case. It's not biblical. You cannot lose your salvation because then you were afraid to have earned it in the first place. Uh, you can't lose it. Uh, uh, God's word says that none would be plucked from his hand. Uh, then it goes on and tells us that we as Gentiles and sinners are no longer living outside. Paul goes in and talks about that. That we're no longer living outside as foreigners and strangers, but we're co-heirs with Jews. And that division is no longer there. The, the, the veil's been torn and we can enter the throne room of grace. We, we do not need to ever look outside for comfort. We don't look to false gods anymore because we've got the almighty God. And we have gained access to all his riches, as it says in chapter 2, because of the blood of Christ that paid for our sins. And he's done this. Why? Why? Because of his great love for us. And Paul is, through repetition, as we know, has hammered this point home for three chapters so that we can understand. And I've said, I even said it yesterday in the sermon, that we have got such a shallow understanding and foundation of who we are in Christ. And we're pursuing things way beyond that, like I mentioned at the Pentecost and all sorts. And we've lost uh, this foundation. And Paul is reminding them in Ephesus who they truly are because he knows if that they lose that temptation will come, compromise will come, and then they'll lose their first love, which they did. 
And Paul's not just telling us to remind us that, he's telling us to walk in that, to remember that, to think like it, live like it, eat like it, sleep like it. Uh, because he knows that a shallow faith and a shallow foundation uh, will, will result in never being able to deal with temptation and then the false gospel when it comes in and the laws when they come in or false teachers when they come in or fleshy temptations when they come in. Uh, and over the years, I've seen so many believers chasing love, and this is what Paul's reminding them, chasing love when they have all the love they could ever desire. This is really what Paul's saying. You don't need to chase love, you've got all the love that you could ever want. People chasing acceptance. You don't need to chase acceptance. You have been accepted beyond measure. The problem is, is that you don't look to that enough. That you don't, that, that is not your foundation. It's not strong enough, so you start looking to other things. People are looking for reasons to live when God has shown them all the reasons to live in Christ. People are looking for meaning when God has shown us complete meaning to who we truly are. Uh, people are looking for forgiveness when when we have been washed as white as snow. People are looking to be rich when we've all got the riches we could ever wish for in heaven. People are fearful from dying when we are, are being granted eternal life. And I'm not talking about unbelievers here. This is for believers. They are looking for a counsellor when we have Christ. We're looking to be understood when we have this wonder of a counsellor. And we're his very own sons and daughters. And Paul is reminding them, do you know how loved you are? Do you know who you truly are in Christ? Do you know the depths that God's went to? For you and that has to be the foundation and where we stand and that happens when we're not living right as we get to chapter 46 when it says to put on the new man that's uh, because we're, we're created in the likeness and image of Christ and that we put off the old man everything is to line up with these first three chapters it's not some new psychology it's, it's reminding us everything is pointing back to this anchor and this foundation and Paul prays that they never forget that and stand in this solid covenant. And that then he prays this amazing prayer. And we'll, we'll start it tonight and we'll conclude it tomorrow. And it says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to his riches and glory, to be strengthened with the might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. And the problem is we cannot be rooted and grounded in love when we don't know who we are in Christ. No, you can try it all you want. That's why you, you fail so many times. That's why people people are end up looking for love rather than rather than being totally satisfied and saturated and knowing how loved they are. And we can't be rooted and grounded in love until we're truly rooted and grounded in the foundation and knowing who we are in Christ. And then it says, being rooted and grounded in love, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints. This is past all the saints, all the believers who have went before us. All the saints and them who were alive at that time to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And I need to go back through this. The, the, the width and length, the length. Do we, do we realise the length that God went to? Do we just remember that? Do we remember how lost we were? Do we remember how we were dead in our sins and trespasses? The length, the detail that God went to, to reach you. It was astounding. The detail he went into for you to have that, awaken that revelation of who he was, that he, he woke you up to when you were dead and lost in your sins and trespasses. No, what a length that God went to. The width. The width, no, it goes to the four corners of the earth. Uh, the, 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 the width, the depth, the depth, have someone saying as the, the height to the heavens and to the depth into the deepest recesses of hell that God went to, to, to show you his love. To know, I'll read that again, that you need to comprehend. This is what we have to comprehend. That our freedom will be in the comprehension of this. To know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. This is a letter that Paul is writing about Christ. And yes, it's spirit breed, but how much more is, is, is the Christ who this letter is wrote about and how much has he gave to us? And Paul is reminding us of that so that we would stand in that through all, 
all eternity. Okay guys, see you tomorrow.